Like it or not, ratings agencies are an integral part of our capital markets. Pilloried for being behind the eight ball with the financial crisis, if not contributing to it, they are now criti critical to developments in Europe. Overnight, Moody's cut the EU's credit outlook to negative, reflecting the economic risks to Germany, France, the UK and the Netherlands. Well, the new chief global economist for the other big American-based ratings agency, Standard & Poor's, Dr Paul Sheard, was in Sydney today and I spoke to him earlier. Paul Sheard, welcome to the programme. Hi Tiki, thank you very much. Now, I know you've done a huge amount of work on quantitative easing and central bank policies generally. Where do you see Europe heading now? Well, I think Europe is, in, uh, is really between a rock and a hard place in many ways. Uh, the Europeans really face really one of two uh, options here. One is to decrease the amount of monetary union. That essentially means some kind of uh, breakup or fragmentation of the Eurozone. Nobody really wants to go in that direction for a number of reasons. It could be quite devastating. So if you don't go down that path, you do really have to go down the path of bringing up the degree of fiscal union to somehow match the degree of monetary union. Now, that also involves, of course, uh, political union and banking union and uh, increased economic union. In the meantime, some of these sovereign nations in Europe, uh, if they were companies, they'd be trading while insolvent. Well, that's, what, that's why they call it the sovereign debt uh, crisis. We've already seen Greece uh, a default on its debt. And there does seem to have been a bit of a sea change in the last month, month and a half, uh, at the ECB and also, I think, among the German uh, government as well, of realising that they need to do something about what they're calling the convertibility risk. Essentially, is the risk uh, that the Eurozone does start to break up and potentially, of course, that could lead to further defaults. So they seem to have really decided that they've got to nip that in the bud. And we've got some important uh, decisions coming up, the ECB meeting uh, this week, and then, of course, on the 12th of uh, September, the German Constitutional Court is going to rule on the uh, European stabilisation mechanism, the, the key firewall uh, that the Europeans have mustered up. Paul, to what extent do you worry that Europe is, in fact, a house of cards and you've got these uh, Euro institutions that are bailing out sovereign nations, which are, t are in turn uh, financing uh, the, the, the Euro institutions or, or funds? Uh, for example, when you downgraded France, the EFSF uh, got, got downgraded as well. Um, just in terms of the ratings process, uh, bear in mind also that I'm the economist. I don't get involved uh, directly in, in those ratings decisions. Uh, but in terms of the bigger picture of you know, what is uh, the, the house of cards, as you called it, you know, I think one important point to make, uh, Tiki, is if you step back and look at the uh, sort of U United States of the Eurozone as a whole, um, it's actually not in that bad uh, fiscal condition. If you looked at the numbers relative to the US, for example, they actually compare quite favorably. It's the fact that you don't have that fiscal union and therefore problems that start to emerge in individual countries start to get amplified um, because of those kind of negative feedback loops that you referred to. Uh, the banking system in these countries hold a lot of the debt. So if you do get the spreads blowing out, you get uh, concerns about solvency, that starts to hit the banking system. And at each, each jun juncture then, uh, governments are called upon to step up with uh, these bailout funds. That's the challenge in, in Europe. Not only are they dealing with the cyclical issues uh, of the post uh, crisis environment, not only are they dealing with oh, structural issues as well of competitiveness uh, and so forth uh, and fiscal reform, but they have this issue of how do they complete this half-built house or indeed uh, do the wind start blowing and the house starts to fall down. It's well known that rating agencies have been accused of failing to predict the crisis and then on the other hand uh, of adding to the crisis by downgrading sovereign nations too far and too fast. How do you answer the question that uh, rating agencies do more harm than good? Well, I think there's a large element there, Tiki, probably of, of sort of shooting the messenger uh, in terms of you know, the idea that rating agencies might be making the situation worse. Rating agencies, I think, are a very important part of the fabric of, of the modern financial system and capital markets. They need to be able to do their job, which is to issue judgments, do analysis and issue judgments about uh, creditworthiness of various entities. So I don't think we should shoot the messenger. Now, you know, could rating agencies have done a better job? Could they do a better job in the future? I think there's always uh, room for improvement. 
improvement. And indeed, uh, the financial crisis showed that there were problems not just at rating agencies, but at a range of entities, including the way in which monetary policy and, and regulatory policy worked. And again, it's well known that uh, credit agencies uh, gave strong ratings to mortgage packages around the subprime, and indeed to Lehman's Ural shop just before September 2008, just before the financial crisis. But how do you react to, on the other side, to the pr pressure from uh, angry banks or sovereigns who are downgraded and blame you for being part of the problem? I mean, you know, I think it may be uh, some measure of uh, that, that uh, we're doing something right if you're if you're actually uh, criticised from both ends of the spectrum, uh, that you're behind the curve and 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 really uh, uh, just validating what's already in the market, or that you're actually uh, you're, you're actually having some influence on the market. So you're a little bit doomed if you do, da damned if you do, damned if you don't. Situation here. Um, I've only joined S and P three months ago, but I've certainly observed that uh, there have been a lot of uh, improvements and changes made within the organisation, uh, trying to make sure sure that, uh, that rating agencies are really uh, on their game. Now, you were actually Global Chief Economist and a Managing Director of Lehman Brothers in 2008, and at the time warning about the les lessons from Japan's bubble. Did you have any idea at the time of just how vulnerable Lehman's itself was? Wow, that's going back to a different life. Um, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was focused on doing my job as an economist, and really rather than the company itself. But um, you know, I th you mentioned the lessons from Japan there. I, I think the U.S. did really uh, implement those lessons very, very well in 2008 and 2009. Obviously, the Lehman shock was a very big one, but uh, the policymakers acted very quickly. They acted very decisively, and they mobilized all their policy lessons. I think that was the key message from Japan. Uh, particularly the banking system, to get on top of that issue. Paul Sheard, fascinating job you've got. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure, Tiki. Thank you very much.